All right, everyone, so let's get into our project. I'm going to open the index file. I'm going to run this in Chrome, just so that we remind ourselves where we're at. So I'm going to open up the project from last time, run it in Chrome. Let's see, the console looks fine. Um, nothing's been saved yet. Um, remember, every time we, st we, we open up the computers here, everything gets erased because of the deep freeze. So let's say here, um, I'm going to start to save some data. So Superman number 1, 1939. Save that. Succeeded true. Let's say then Superman number 1 from 1983. Save that. That's what I'm getting this issue about the ID already existing, but we had a way of creating a random number. Do one more Superman number one from 2011. Save that. So all of them were conflicting with the same ID. At the very end of the day, we uh, I didn't record it, but remember I, we kind of thought about what would be a possible way to more efficiently save this information. Because if I wanted to save again, Superman number one from 1939, and I click save, well, depending how we program it, it's going to allow us. If I look at the index DB data by sequence, it did store four comics. The first one was Superman number one, 1939, with an idea of SUP1. The second time I saved. Superman number one from 1983, and it saved it as SUP178, so there's our random number. The third one, Superman number one, 2011, SUP41. And we did that before. But then remember, thinking about, well, what if a person is saving the exact same issue? Here, here I am again, Superman number one, 1939, same as my first one, and it said, great. Here we go, SUP 142. That's the issue that we kind of spent a little uh, time brainstorming last time. And um, I did spend some more time kind of thinking about it and working with the code and checking the documentation of pouch and such. And I have a way for this to work. So let's implement a system. We have a way to save a comic that if it shares almost everything else, it can be saved. Superman number one, 1939. 1983, 2011. Those are three separate comics, and it will let us save them all. That's what we want. Now let's add a way so that it, we don't save the same, the exact same comic more than once. That's the one we had concerns several times. Well, what if it's the exact same comic we're saving? The random number generator actually doesn't help us there. So we're going to fix this right now. Uh, so I don't want two copies of the exact same comic in the database. It is about having more pieces of data in mind as we save to the database. And just like anything with programming, there's many ways to do this. This is one way. This way will work. This is one way. There could be other ways that also work, maybe even better. Of course, better is subjective. Better in less typing, less code, more thoughtful, more elegant, it saves less information or you know space. There's many ways what is better. So this is one way. We're going to have to check uh, a little bit more data and to check that that data creates is unique compared to the one you're, you're trying to save also. So there's a couple more checks that happen. So, if you go back to your code, I think the good, the better way to do this to make sure that this system works, because as I was testing it, I, I thought of another way where it might kind of not quite work. I think it is going to be better to also include the year as a required field. Um, if you don't have it as required, a person might not type it, and then this safety check system isn't as effective as it could be. So let's go back to line 20 or so, where you've got the input of an optional year. And let's cut it and paste it. Let's move it to the required area. 
So you want to move, you want to cut the year field and paste it into, take it out of the optional. So take it from 21 up to 17. And you need to add the required attribute. Just because it's in the required field set, technically it's still not required. So we need to add input type number, attribute required, and then placeholder. So I don't want the year to be optional anymore. Move it to the required area and add the required attribute to the input of type number. For testing purposes, of course, we can turn off required simply to speed things up, but I do want required for the user. I want them to type the name of the comic, the number of the comic, the year of the comic. So required number, the requir uh, required year of the comic. Based on that, we're going to then create a new field, so to speak, in our comic, in our JSON data, in our bundle of data. It is going to use the title and the number and the year to much more accurately identify a unique entry into our database. We'll go back down to the part where we're bundling the data together. It's all the way down. In line 108. So all of the data that we're collecting from those input fields, we bundle them together into a JSON object. And now we're going to use the in title, the in number, and the in year for one more unique identifier. So one more field at the end of line 114, comma, because we're going to have a new key and value pair, quotes, unique ID. Why can't we just add? Let, let, let me stop you right there. Because like I said earlier, there are many ways to do this, and it could be the possibility that there's other ideas, and they will probably work, but there's many ways to do it. Sorry to interrupt. How are you going to say it? What we have to do, we can just add the year into the ID plus dollar about a year, and then our ID will never both have very little possibility of being the same. This ID right now, this temp ID at the moment is the three letter ID that we stripped out or extracted out of the longer name. And this unique ID, I'm going to use the full name of the title that they've put in. Now the full name of the title could also have apostrophes and asterisks and all of that. So for this one, I'm going to make it so that it's the title that they type, but stripping out the special characters and spaces and so forth. So yeah, it, it could be done this way too, uh, using this ID. Uh, I'm here showing another possibility, another reason to do this is I'm showing also the flexibility of this. And when you have these various fields that can be used for different things, and that we can add a new field as we wish to then, you know, shape it how we want. But the short answer is because I'm the instructor and I'm standing up here. I'll do it this way. So uh, we're going to use the dollar val in title, but I don't want to use it as is because okay, Superman is one word. It's easy, but if the comic is the Amazing Spider-Man. I want to remove the empty spaces and the special characters and that sort of thing. So we have then a dot replace method. Slash backslash 
S. So there is a regular forward slash, and then a backwards backslash. This is a regular expression, which is searching for a string in our, in our, in our input. So the forward slash means we're going to search for a string. The backward slash is the white space special character, and then slash g. We'll write the notes in a moment. But this is saying, okay, search the string, whatever the person typed, if there's spaces, search in the string globally. That's the g, comma, open quote, end quote. So we're replacing any instances of empty spaces or other things that we would like with empty, or with nothing. So the Amazing Spider-Man would be replaced with, uh, with re would remove those empty spaces. Yeah, one word. Instead of three words, it's going to make it one word. Dot to uppercase. So however they type it, just force it all uppercase because a capital A is different than a lowercase a. So whatever they type, just force it uppercase. Plus thou in number number as is plus thou in year. Now another reason for using different fields, you can do different things with them. If you create these different fields and populate them with different data, you can do more powerful operations when you have to retrieve the data, when you have to display the data. So these, this is something to figure out early on in the phase of your project where we're figuring out what is the schema of our, of our database and our project. So now with this field, we can um, check if, a, if the exact comic has already existed. And if there's a different version, Superman 1983 versus Superman 2011, the system that we already have in place will still work. Um, it's just here we're checking if it's the exact same book. Let's save that and then scroll down to about 138, case 409. Oh, actually, let's back up. Uh, comment. Let's add the comment there just for our, for our own info. Remember, we can't have a comment inside of the um, JSON object. So outside of the JSON, we can go back. We'll add a comment here. Dot replace. Searches for a string, searches through a string, for white space, that's the backslash s. So replace searches through a string, that's the slash. So the slash starts the search, backslash s finds anything that's a white space, then replaces all instances, that's slash g, with nothing, which is the empty quotes. So, the amazing Spider-Man becomes one word, the amazing Spider-Man. Empty spaces could cause trouble, so we're stripping them out. Technically, we're not dealing with other characters, so 
this dash would stay, which would be fine. A, a dash um, often would work better than an empty space. But we can also scan for these special characters. Would it be all caps? Say that again? Would it be all caps? Technically, that's only what replaces do it. Then it goes to uppercase. Okay. So, like I said here, only so what replaces doing is only that. But then yes, then we do dot to uppercase, which forces it to uppercase. So, known as a reg x, or sometimes people call it reg x, reg x, regular expression. Has anyone has any experience with regular expressions before? A couple people? OK. Um, regular expressions are a very powerful but honestly confusing thing uh, to work with the first time you do it, because uh, this is a way for you to search inside of a string that is like in the most unuser-friendly way possible, like I'm showing right here. Who would know that a forward slash means let's search in the string? Who would know that a backslash s means empty spaces, I guess the s? And then the slash g is global. There's a whole website, probably it's called, probably called regx.com or something, where it gives you the whole manual on how regular expressions work. Let's see if I can just pull it up quickly. regxr.com, regx101.com. That's a different site than I've seen. But uh, here's one, regxr.com. This is a way that kind of teaches you how this thing works. If you're trying to search for characters, it's a whole big old thing. Here's a cheat sheet. This concept is kind of complex. So here's a cheat sheet, I guess, that someone created. Right. So if you're trying to look for um, you know, backslash s, white space, any instance of a white space, it's backslash s. If you're looking for one character that is not a digit defined by your engine's digit, so find examples of things that are not digits. So if you're trying to find the letters in a word, backslash d, the opposite is one character that is not a word. So if you do backslash capital W, capital and lowercase does matter on this, capital W will find examples of like the special characters. Then we can do not operators, so it's the opposite of, so logic and all of that. So this is a big old, big old thing. And then group it together, find instances of the letters A through F, but not including C. You know, it could be very complex. And this is a big old cheat sheet. It's, uh, it's a big concept. So for the short answer for right now, what we're doing is searching for any instances of white space globally in the string, or else if we don't say that, it'll only find the first instance of the white space and replace it with nothing. So we get a simplified version run together. Okay, so then we'll go back to the 409 case. All right, so scroll down, 144 or so, case 409. This is an example where the ID already exists. <coughs> and Let's say right after that alert that we have there, give yourself some space. db.get. OK, if we get to 409, we know that the ID we're trying to save is the same as an ID that exists in the database. So let's check. Uh, is the unique identifier, the unique ID, 
of the one I'm trying to save is that exactly the same as the one that's already in the database. So we first have to get the example of the conflict inside of db.get. We're then using a comic. Dot underscore ID. Now here we were trying to put the instance of this comic into the database. A comic. Let's say, okay, let's check that one. What is that ID? Comma, we have the usual function open close parentheses open close curly braces, every uh, pouch action results in this basically, right? The failure or the success. So as we've, as we've seen already, okay, we're going to have a few steps here. There could be the possibility of a failure or a success. So in the curly braces, we'll break that curly brace to the next line. We have an if-else statement to deal with if or else. As we've done several times, it's the same sort of skeleton. There really shouldn't be an instance of failure here because db.get is trying to get something out of the database. <coughs> well, there really shouldn't be a time when failure happens because if this if else doesn't trigger until we're in case 409, which we know, that means that ID already exists. So nothing really happens under this failure, but just I guess we can put console log just in case there's something else to deal with. test this, we could uh, have another console output and say uh, old comic success oops, plus success.uniqueID Comic, a comic dot unique ID. We'll test this in a moment, but the logic here is okay, we're trying to get um, a comic that might already exist. It probably already exists because we're in the case 409. Okay, so failure never happens else. Else is, is success. We were able to get a comic from the database with a certain ID. We're going to do the real comparison in a moment. I want to see if it's on the right track so far. The old comic is the comic from the database. So the comic in the database when we get comes back to us as an object called success. Um, we could have that called data, as we were kind of used to doing it in the other activities, but I'm going to keep it as success, as we've seen that before. So think about it then as data.uniqueID, success.uniqueID. Whatever this is called right here is a representation of the object from the database. So I'm saying, okay, in the console, show me the unique ID of the comic 
that's already in the database, the old comic in the database. And show me the ID that we're trying to um, put right now so that we can compare. I don't want to do any of this stuff just yet of generating a new number and putting it in the database and such. Let's comment out all of that stuff until we get to the break. I don't want it to, to save anything yet or to generate anything yet. What's that? Oh, all right, thank you. Success. I'm going to save this and run it. Uh, I'm going to delete. I already saved, it some, saved some things in the database. I'm going to delete the database completely and run it again just so that I have a fresh slate. So to remind you how to do that, I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it in, in Chrome. Open up the F12 and then click on in the application tab, click on pouch and click delete, then close the browser and run it again. So delete that, click OK, refresh it, or actually close it completely and then run it again. Just want to make sure I've got a complete empty database for the moment. So, testing it like this um, Superman number one, 1939, save. Superman number one, 1983, save. Okay, so it already exists. Old comic, 1939 from 1983. That in that case, it will still generate when we take off the comment. It'll I still want it to generate the random number because that is a valid case. But if I'm trying to save Superman number one, 1989 again, uh, 1939 again, this is the case where what's already in the database matches what we're trying to put in. So the code we've done before from last time will still be in effect when I want to save um, uh, as the same comic but with a different year. Nothing's getting saved to the database yet. Uh, let me check your code. It shouldn't be undefined because we have we're pulling data out of the database.
creates unique ideas in moments of it. Yeah, just call it the browser completely and then just run it. No, there should be enough that it removes it from memory. So it's okay that the old one says undefined, it's just that I'm trying to load a field that didn't exist on the old copy. Delete the database, we'll do it over and now.
Before you get to the All right, so what this is doing here is it's checking uh, simply what is the unique idea of the old comic, what is this new one. Now that we can tell this, uh, we can do an if-else, because this is what will allow us to check to make sure that we are not duplicating the, the exact comic. This is, of course, just to check what's the old comic, what's the new comic we're trying to put in. If we can see that information, then we can create a simple if-else if statement to make sure that they're not the same. If they are exactly the same, that fixes our issue that we had before about not letting the person put in the exact same comic more than once or else they are different enough so that you can do this part, the random number stuff. We'll do that in a moment. So the first part, if. If success dot unique ID equals 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 a comic dot unique ID exact same comic different comic. The triple equals. Right, double equals is checking if they are the same. Triple equals is checking that they are the same but also the same type. Because technically a 1 as a string is not the same as a 1 as a number. 1 is a word, 1 is a number. Triple equals is also checking for type. That a number 1 is the same as a number 1. If we're checking, is a number one the same as a string one? That fails with double equals. Triple equals checks that it's the same and the same type. It's a little bit more safe. So uh, this first if part, it's the exact same comic. So here we can write to the, we can tell the user, alert, you already have this comic. We already saved this comic. If we know, oops, if we know that it is the same name, same year, same issue, it's got to be the same one because all of those three fields were used for unique ID. Besides that, then, okay, well, Superman number one uh, from different years. Um, that's a different comic, obviously. But remember, we are using 
the underscore ID that is only the three letters of the comic. So amazing fantasy could conf number one could conflict with amazing Spider-Man number one with amazing adventures number one. All of those would have AMA one. So then that's in the example where I would want this other stuff over here. Um, which line is this? 161. So here is where I would move this. I would cut and paste this. Yes, let's create a random number. And let's save that new comic in the database. That says the cut it, move it into the else. And then you can remove the comment around what's left over. I still want to reset the form. So outside of the if else, it resets the form no matter what. But the big idea was to check uniqueness of the comic already in the database versus the comic you're trying to put in now. All right, so if I run this, currently have saved only one item, just to test this. I currently have Superman number 1, 1939. If I save Superman number 1, 1983, it will let me this would be SCP-155 I then try to save again, Superman number 1, 1939, pop up. You already have this comic. Because those IDs were being compared. The, 19, the 1983 version is not the same as the 1939 version, so it saves as a new ID. And the 39 version is the same as the 39 version, so it will not save it because it's the same thing. So that's, uh, th that's the digression we did last time at the end of the day. Uh, we were brainstorming together. Again, there's many ways that this can be done. It could be done also with thinking about putting uh, using underscore ID in, a, in, a, in, in, another, in another way that, that could work, definitely. And as I said, there's many ways to do this. So I'll just test it again here with something else. So let's say I put the amazing Spider-Man. Number one, 1963. Save that. 
The Amazing Spider-Man number one, I think 1998, there was another number one. Save that. Another one, The Amazing Spider-Man number one, I think from, nine, from 2014. Save that. So, checking my database, refreshing that. So I've got all three being saved. They all share the same, AMA1. AMA1 from my first one, 63. Next one, AMA7, 98. And AMA40, 2014. So I still, I, I want that random number to show up there. And notice the unique ID is saving without white spaces, but with the dash. I could further refine that dot replace to take out the dash. Then I have to think, okay, take out the dash and the apostrophe and the quote and so forth. So the regular expression, I believe, can be programmed to find anything that is not a letter or a number. So when you use an app from any other publisher and it just works, someone had to figure out all those possibilities. What is the type of dash? What about an apostrophe? What about an emoji? What about a colon? All of these possibilities. Right now, this still could be refined. I want to move on because there's still more we can do. This could still be refined to strip out the dashes. And what if they put two spaces? And technically, again, I don't want to fully get into it, but there are ways to... Uh, to still break it at this point. Um, you know, I can put in, look at this. Great, it took it. Empty spaces in title, put in the year 12, and then the number one. Better yet, the year should be at least 1900 or whatever. I don't want to put the year 12, there were no comics in the year 12 but that's any year you want. Okay, how about the year 30,029? Great, that'll take it. What's that? That's true, yeah, they do them on cave walls and had hunting the wildebeest. And I'm sure, yeah. Numbers, uh, let's see, does this take negative numbers? Because there are some comics that are negative numbers, actually. Believe it or not, the X-Files has a negative number two, like 2000. Probably like 98. So does it save that? Let's check that. Uh, yeah, negative two. So it did. A, it did let us save a number two. That's good. I wasn't expecting it. But let me go back to the one that I just put empty spaces. It allowed it. The title of this comic is empty, 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 empty. Plus the year 19 plus the number one. So the unique ID for that is empty, empty, empty one. Again, I don't want to get more sidetracked on this because there's still more of this that we can test for and create good input to save to the database. But as you test this, you're going to find all of these use case scenarios. This is the point of beta testing, uh, the point of testing this app in different ways with different people to try to break it. Uh, before that, what's before beta testing? Trick question. Alpha testing, of course, alpha, beta, etc. Alpha testing. Alpha testing is uh, technically, you know, before you get it out to other people, you yourself are testing it over and over in different ways. We've been doing alpha testing all along ourselves. But you yourself are going to see, what if I put this and that in these spots? What if I put, you know, asterisk and this and that, and there's Yosemite Sam cussing at me, number one from 1951. It'll take it. 1951, and then I accidentally put a number, another number from the year 19,511. We have the comics beam directly into our minds. Yeah, it'll let you save that. No problem. So comic gibberish from the future. It'll let you. There is a way to put a range of, of, of inputs. Um, I have to look it up, but there is a way to put a range of inputs from 1900 to 2020. And then there is a way to also only accept real letters and numbers in the title. That's fine for the moment. We're, we're saving stuff in the database. 
Right now, we're only seeing the stuff in the database in the developer console. I want to start to see it on screen. I want to start showing it to people because, whoops, I misspelled Spider-Man. Whoops, I put the wrong year. I want to be able to edit that. I want to be able to remove a comic. So we're going to move on and start to do that. Any questions up to this point about saving something to the database? Need to start to then get stuff from the database.